Bonjour, this is Tom Padula from Tom Padula TV on YouTube and Insegna Booksellers. And uh, this is the series of languages and cultures and uh, that embodies the study of French and Spanish. French that I can, you know, I can teach, uh, I suppose. And, uh, you know, I'm sort of improving on the more advanced stages of the language. And... Uh, Spanish that is struggling along, uh, along with you. <laughs> but I can read now. One of the things that I've noticed, though, is that of all the language skills, the easiest one is really to listen to it. You don't have to do anything, you just listen. But it's a problem if you're not, you know, if you don't hear very well. Then the next one... Uh, what, what's the next one? To speak, I'll leave that to last. Reading is the next one. So listening and reading. Easy. Because once you've learned how to read, you don't really have to understand everything that you read. But you have to read it uh, correctly. And, you know, the intonation will come later when, uh, you know, you learn to speak the language a little bit and... A bit more after that and you know and keeps going so reading aloud is very important because you can read slowly you can read fast you can read at a medium pace you can try to understand what you have read by you know knowing more words and uh, familiarizing yourselves with uh, the adjectives and the verbs and uh, then after reading, really, writing is the next one. Because with writing, you can formulate small sentences just with a verb in you know, a present tense of être, or avoir, or parler, you know, any of the verbs important. You can create those small sentences, you know, with using the pronouns, I, you, he, she, or a name in the third person and finally we come to speaking speaking is what everyone wants to do they want to communicate exactly in the right way with a French person a person who speaks French only and uh, they want to do it properly yeah, I've got that sort of ambition but I realise that unless you are with uh, the French for a while you know, you have to go to France and live there for a few months. Or Nomea, up here in the Pacific. Uh, the interesting part of the language is that once you've identified these four language skills and you know what you can do, then you can choose between listening, in other words, watch television, films, songs. You listen and keep on listening. Then with the songs, if you look up the lyrics, that leads you directly into reading. So you read and you learn. And we know, then you do, can do the translation, etc. But really, that's the important part. But that leads actually to writing as well, because in all those, the lyrics of songs, there are a lot of nouns, words, phrases, which you can use in writing sentences. And finally, that elusive speaking act, uh, activity has to come in. Tu dois commencer à parler en français avec quelqu'un, même avec toi. Je voudrais beaucoup parler avec quelqu'un qui veut uh, apprendre le français avec moi. Et l'autre jour, je lu, je lu que les Italiens, quand ils veulent euh, apprendre quelque chose, ils commencent à l'enseigner. <laughs> Because they said, you know, the people learn it, you know, they're very, very good. Uh, you know, they follow the rules. But the Italians got a... a 
a particular way of um, looking at things, I, you know, culturally speaking. <laughs> so I have been saying for quite a while that the best way of being a student is to actually teach someone else. That way you've got to prepare. And when you prepare, you, you have to learn what you have to say. So therefore, you are actually forcing yourself to be a good étudiant. <laughs> Well, that's it. And, you know, today is the 30th of uh, December, Friday the 30th, tomorrow is Saturday the 31st. Uh, it's, um, you know, we, we're finishing off 2022 and we're going to go into 2023. So, bon année to everyone. Hoping that uh, you have uh, la salut, la joie, la felicité, la prospérité, etc. Okay. Now, today I'm going to bring in uh, one of the poems of Jacques Prévert. Uh, I thought it's time. This is lesson number 41 on Friday, the 30th of December, 2022. So uh, it's a good one to start with the, the literature, the French literature. So I'll bring it in a little bit more with uh, Jacques Prévert uh, today. But before that, we're going to do, what are we going to do? You, uh, with the usual. We're going to do the usual. And so we'll start with, we'll start with, here we go. Irregular adverbs. Okay, we'll go back. Some adverbs have irregular stems. For example, bref in the masculine, gentil in, in the masculine, impuni in the masculine. In the feminine, it's bref becomes brève, gentil becomes gentille, impuni, puni. And then the, uh, the adverb is brèvement. It's a bit irregular. Brèvement, the e grave on bri, b r i e grave, v e m e n t, gentiment, not gentilement, gentiment, there's no l. Impunement. There's no I. Okay, some, some adverbs differ altogether from the corresponding adjective. For example, bon, in the feminine is bon, mauvais, mauvaise, meilleur, meilleur, moindre, moindre, petit, petit. But the adverbs are bien, mal, mieux, moins, peu. Il chante bien, il écrit mal, il va mieux, il travaille peu. So you can distinguish between bon, mauvais, and bien, mal by remembering that the adjectives bon and mauvais modify nouns, whereas the adverb bien and mal modify verbs. That's what we said. Now I'm going to show it to you uh, because you want to know, of course. Here we go. See that? Bref, brève, gentil, impuni. Brèvement. There you are. Mauvais, mauvais, mal. Meilleur, meilleur, mieux, moins, peur, etc. Okay? So that's uh, some irregular adverbs. Again, this is not French. It's about French. Then these things need to be, uh, need to be put into practice. Okay. Now, adjectives and adverbs. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah. It's a bit... I don't know whether... The light is, uh, I hope you can see me better. What is it? So a lot of light here in this place today. Adjectives and adverbs. Elle est bonne, mauvaise, en mathématiques. Elle parle bien le français. Okay? Some adverbs are identical to the masculine singular adjectives. Adjectives and adverbs. But. Il parle bas, il speak slow. Bon, good. Ça sent bon. Chaud, warm. Il fait chaud. It's warm weather, like now. Cher, expensive. Les robes coûtent cher. Coûte cher. Elle voit clair. Courte, il s'arrête courte. Dur, il travaille dur. Faux. Let me see if I push this. That way. What's going on here? Why can't I see it? Hmm? Oh, 
Oh, I don't know what's going on here. I can't see myself. <laughs> oh, well, I just got to keep going, of course, like I normally do. And then we'll see later. Okay, I, I hope that the picture, uh, you know, your picture is, uh, is clear on the other side. So let's go on. Uh, clair, clair, court, dur, faux, fort, haute, juste, mauvais, net. These are the ones that, um, you know, are still irritated with this. Why aren't you, why aren't you hmm, giving me my, my image? Oh. I'm so scared of touching something and going out of, um, you know, going out. This is unbelievable. Anyway, let's go on. Il parle bas, ça sent bon, il fait chaud, les robes coûtent cher, elle voit clair, il s'arrête courte, elle travaille dur, il chante faux, il crie fort, il parle haute, elle tire juste, ça sent mauvais. Okay, so that's... Uh, and then the exercise relating to this, you have to figure out what, which one to put the adjective or the verb in its place. So when, uh, the ad, when it's an adjective to a noun is different when it's an adverb to the verb. Okay? So, for example, conférencière parle, uh, bref. Okay? Il agit, il a agi, uh, gentil, gentil. Gentil, gentil, gentiment, il a agi gentiment, elle parle bien le français, l'élève écrit mal, écrit mal, etc. Ok, so that's that. Now, that's, that's number one. Number two, we said we're going to do the plays, and the plays, it's up to you, because I've shown you the plays. They are available, okay? Les Femmes Parlent Trop and Simone Fait Bonne Impression, they're available in these lessons. So I'll go to insegna.com and look it up, all right? Then the next one is Un Chien Perdu. Un Chien Perdu. Uh, from Count Sympathique. I'm going to read it first and then I'll show you, hoping that, uh, you know, uh, the, the actual images come through to you. Uh, Chien perdu. Let's see if we can understand it. Listening. If you remember, listening is the easiest part. Je flanais sur la promenade de son gré à Nice quand j'ai vu un chien qui s'approchait de chaque personne qui passait. Il me semblait que le chien cherchait son maître. Je l'ai pris dans mes bras et je l'ai emporté au bureau de police. Le brigadier, un homme très sérieux, m'a regardé d'un air soupçonné. Sa longue moustache lui donnait la mine méchante. Après quelques instants, il m'a demandé... « Que voulez-vous, monsieur ?»« J'ai trouvé ce petit chien et je veux le rendre à son maître, » ai-je dit. « Comment savez-vous que le chien est perdu ?» So here we go. This is a, a dog, you know, la promenade des Anglais à Nice. We are in the town of Nice, in the city of Nice. And uh, this guy find, sees a dog on the promenade, on the footpath. And he decides to pick it up and bring it to the brigadier and the police. And uh, the police is a bit irritated. We don't look after dogs here. We look after humans. But he's very seriously then says to the guy, uh, why are you bringing this dog to us? Because I want you to return it to its owner. Okay? And, and the, the police superintendent says, how do you know that it's lost? It's not just a dog out there in the, in the street. So you can see I'm sort of uh, reading it and then explaining it in my own words rather than translating it. We continue. Il me l'a dit. Je leur répondu ainsi parce que la question était tellement bébête. 
Il m'a jeté un regard fâché. Je me suis rendu compte qu'il n'aimait pas les réponses comiques. J'ai donc rajouté. Je veux dire, monsieur, que ces tristes yeux m'ont dit que ce pauvre animal devait être perdu. « Excusez-moi, monsieur, a dit le brigadier, voudriez-vous me donner quelques renseignements ?»« Avec plaisir, et j'ai répondu avec politesse. »« Comment vous appelez-vous »« Je m'appelle Percy Gla Gladstone. »« So, up to now, hein? we get uh, that, you obviously, the, the, this, the, his name is Percy, Percy Gladstone is the name, the superintendent asks for his name, he says, my name is Percy. » And what makes you think that this animal here, uh, you know, because he was irritated with him. What makes you think that this, uh, uh, you, know, you, you know, you're trying to be funny, bringing a dog here to the police station. But Percy continued, says, no, no, I saw in, in, in the eyes of this dog, he was so sad that he obviously must be looking for his, for his, for his maître, for his master. Uh, and then he asked him, what is his your name? Okay. Quel âge avez-vous? J'ai 35 ans. Quelle est votre adresse? Je demeure à l'hôtel au coin de cette rue. Êtes-vous citoyen français? Non, monsieur, je suis anglais. Votre passeport, s'il vous plaît. Pourquoi voulez-vous le voir? Ai-je demandé. Parce que les questions commençaient à m'ennuyer. À m'ennuyer. So he says, so the policeman now, turns the, the, the cards against him, says, what's your name, where do you live, and he lives in a hotel close by, are you French, no, I'm not French, can I have your passport, etc., etc. And then, of course, the English, you know, he says, I'm from England, and the Englishman says, oh, he gets began, becoming annoyed with, uh, with the brigadier. Okay. Pourquoi voulez-vous le voir? Why do you want to see my passport? Je, et je demandé. Parce que les questions, comme, and he said that because the, the brigadier's questions were annoying him. Je vous prie de répondre sans m'interrompre. Il me semble que vous ne parlez pas français comme un touriste étranger. Dites-moi, monsieur, où avez-vous appris à parler si bien le français? <laughs> that could be me. <laughs> J'ai acheté un petit livre, le français en dit les sons faciles, et ça fait 20 ans que je l'étudie. Je vous avertis, monsieur, n'essayez pas de vous moquer de la police. <laughs> so he says, uh, he says oh, you know, I want your name and address and everything else, and you tell me that you're not French, I want to see your passport, and how come you speak French so well? He says, oh, <laughs> because I bought a little... Uh, a little book in French, he says, uh, le learn French very easily in 10 lessons. <laughs> oh, in, uh, in 10 lessons, and I've been doing it for 20 years. <laughs> There's no way no one could have spoken French well. Je vous avertis, monsieur, don't, mock, don't make fun of the police. Monsieur le brigadier, et je dis très agacé maintenant, je ne peux plus souffrir cette interrogation. Je ne suis pas criminel. Je suis tout simplement un homme honorable qui essaie d'aider un pauvre petit animal. Je vous assure que je ne suis pas perdu, moi. C'est le petit chien qui est perdu. <laughs> I get so irritated. I say, hey, listen, Mr. Brigadier, uh, I, you know, I, I, he gets a bit angry, I guess, maintenant. I, I doesn't suffer very easily, this interrogation. He says, I'm not a criminal. I am an honorable man who's trying to help a poor, a poor animal. I can assure you, he says, <laughs> I am not lost. It's the dog that's lost. <laughs> and she And then there are the questions about it. Okay. So that's good. I'm not going to do the questions. I don't even know what the time is now because my I can't see the I can't see my image. I don't understand. But lucky I've got this other uh, this other phone, so it's okay. So that's that. Number two, we go for a drink. I 
I did, I did go on and introduce myself at the beginning, and I did go live. Now, am I live? That's the question. I'm alive, but am I live on Facebook? Let's see. Jacques Prevert. So we're going to go a bit of literature here. In a recent autobiographical note, Jacques Prevert states rather proudly that his formal studies went no further than the Ecole Communale, up to grade five, or primary school. Born in Paris of a Breton father and a mother from the Auvergne, he has always shown a healthy, even provocative distrust of erudition for its own sake. Page de Quitou, le Concre. And more broadly, of all the behavioural conventions of the French middle class. He prefers instead to pay tribute to the redeeming strength of innocence and tenderness and imagination by which le visage du bonheur enters our lives. Writing on a few favourite lyrical themes, love, pity, despair, childhood, Prevert handles them with a dramatic skill in a tone of unsentimental directness. Although one must say that his most characteristic work lacks the subtlety of great art, none can doubt his power and freshness. After many years with his poems were known only to a small Parisian circle, he achieved overnight celebrity in 1946, I'm still waiting, with the collection Parole, which in the same way as his later books of verse rapidly became an outstanding bestseller. Uh, this is very much after my heart to Jacques Prévert. Page d'Ecriture is one of his poems, and then the other one is Le, uh, Le, Le Conque, okay, and, uh, and the other one is Familial, Le Col des Beaux-Arts. So uh, I'm going to do them all. Let's see how we go. De, de quatre, 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 huit, 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 huit Françoise, répétez, dit le maître, de, de, quatre, 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 huit, 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 huit Françoise, mais voilà l'oiseau lire qui passe dans le ciel, l'enfant le voit, l'enfant l'entend, l'enfant s'appelle, sauve-moi, joue avec moi, oiseau, alors l'oiseau descend et joue avec l'enfant. Deux, deux, quatre, répétez, dit le maître, et l'enfant joue, l'oiseau joue avec lui, quatre, quatre, huit, 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 font seize, et seize, et seize, qu'est-ce qu'ils font Ils ne font rien, seize, et seize, et surtout pas trente-deux, de toute façon, et ils vont, ils s'en vont. Et l'enfant a caché l'oiseau dans son pupitre, et tous les enfants entendent sa chanson, et tous les enfants entendent la musique, et huit et huit à leur, à leur tour s'en vont, et quatre et quatre, deux et deux. À leur tour fiche le camp, et un et un ne font qu'une ni deux, un à un s'en vont également. Et l'oiseau lire joue, et l'enfant chante, et le professeur crie, quand vous aurez fini de faire le pitre. Mais tous les autres enfants écoutent la musique, et les murs de la classe s'écroulent tranquillement, et les vitres reviennent sable, l'encre redevient eau, les pupitres redeviennent arbre, la craie redevient falaise, le porte-plume redevient oiseau. Wow. I actually, when I was at university, I wrote something like this, that I wanted to be outside of the lecture theatre with 500 people. Big lecture theatre, we hold 500 seats, unbelievable. All full, in French one. That was uh, 1968. Oof, long time ago. So this one here was written in unrhymed verse with no regular syllabic pattern and using a simple gamu of words. Page d'écriture is a typical example of Proverbs' fantasy and charm. It presents the contrast between a school boy's wool gathering and the imperious call to rote learning to the monotonous repetition of numbers that go to make each with each a coherent whole. Yet, despite the teacher's efforts, it is no logic but the naive imagination that triumphs undoing a ready-made world and transforming the objects of the classroom into their original forms. Note in particular that the thought is beautifully clinched with the pun of the last line by which we are reminded that porte de plume, fountain pen, means literally a feather holder, a bird.
<laughs> well done, Jacques Prévert. Well, that's that's it. So how are we going for time? Huh? Oh, we can got we got time for the next one. It's called Le Concre. Le Concre. Il dit non avec la tête, mais il dit oui avec le cœur. Il dit oui à ceux qu'il aime. Il dit non au professeur. Il est debout. On le questionne. Et tous les problèmes sont posés soudain. Le fou rire le prend et il efface, efface toutes les chiffres, les mots, les dates, les noms, les phrases et les pièges. Et malgré les menaces du maître sous les, 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 les yeux des enfants prodiges, avec les craies de toutes les couleurs sur le tableau noir du malheur, il descend le visage du bonheur. Again. In adopting once more the theme and setting of page d'écriture, Prévert treats them in Le Concre in a wholly different style. A contrast is drawn between teacher and child, but the dramatic opposition is here obtained less discursively and without recourse to wit. As the tone of his voice rises in the last five lines, the poet very convincingly pricks the bubble of glum scholarship. Wow. There's still room for me, I think, uh, because my poetry is a bit like this. I'm free, I don't follow anything, I just follow my heart when I write. And some of it is good, some of it, you know, short of the mark, but honestly, what, what counts is the, uh, the practice, the continual practice. So here we go. I hope that uh, today's effort, my effort today, is um, it's worthwhile because you know I'm going to actually go short today because I'm not quite sure whether I, I am on I am on in uh, live on Facebook I think I am but who knows Jacques Prévert okay there is one more uh, some parlons en français let's do a little bit of parlons en français. Okay, we did last week. This is now we're going to uh, the cardinal numbers, not the ordinal ones, the ordinary, you know, the, but the cardinal ones, the ones that says le premier, le deuxième, le troisième. So we're doing the months of the year. Le, pre, le premier mois, janvier. Le deuxième mois, février. Le troisième mois, mars. Le quatrième mois, avril. Où sommes-nous à ce moment Nous sommes à le deuxième mois en décembre. So you can make sentences like that. Le quatrième mois, avril. Le cinquième mois, mai. Le sixième mois, juin. Le septième mois, juillet. Le huitième mois, août. Le neuvième mois, septembre. Le deuxième mois, octobre. Le onzième mois, novembre. Le deuxième mois, décembre. I can't see anyone coming on today. Oh my God. Come on. Oh yeah. Now, how do I get back? Here we are. Yes. I was able to turn it around. How's this? No, I still not. Still not. Oh, it must be the light. What have I done here? Oh, I know. Uh, I can't fix it. I, I know I can have to fix it now. That's okay. That's okay. Because I must have turned the, the light, you know, the light on, the, on my screen off by mistake somehow. And therefore, therefore, I can't see it. But you can see me. I'm sure of it. And uh, once I finish, I should be able to see myself. So let's keep going. That's it. That's beautiful. Cheers, Tom. Optimism. The only thing I can't do, I can't... Uh, Flora Paradiso. I have problems, Flora. Ciao. Buon anno. A te. 
uh, if you are l looking in. My screen has gone off, so I must have turned off the light. But it doesn't matter, because I'm sure that uh, since you came on, I can just see, see barely your name. And all, who else? I can see also, who can I see? Someone else. But uh, again, I can't risk, uh, you know, going out. Alors, exercise sur les mois. We went to the sixième mois de juin, the septième mois de juillet, the huitième mois de août, the neuvième mois de septembre, the deuxième mois de octobre, the onzième mois de novembre, the deuxième mois de décembre. And so, exercise sur les mois. So you can do some exercises. Quel est le premier mois de l'année? And it's a good way to ask questions. To when you write, you can then try to write. Quelle est la première année de l'année? Quelle est la deuxième uh, année uh, mois de l'année de l'année? Quelle est le septième mois de l'année? You can ask questions and answers, and the, you build up your vocabulary in that way. And as I said, the writing part is the easiest part because you can pick up. You can pick up words and phrases from what I've read today. And Jacques Prévert, you can look him up or online and find out about when he lived and what he was like. And from what I've read there, Jacques Prévert was a man after my heart. He, was, he only done grade five in France, but he became uh, a self-taught uh, poet, really, he, from the heart. There are other uh, exercises here in this book, uh, lots of them, and uh, I suggest I suggest that if you are here in Melbourne and you want to learn French, come and get one of these. I've only got a few copies left. So, that's it. That's it. Now, let's have a look. Ah, that gives me some time now to sing some French songs, and then we'll go to uh, Spanish. Okay, let me see. Oh, this is, this is my Italian one. Where's my, uh, there it is. My Italian folder for singing. By the way, on Facebook, I, uh, I put in a beautiful song uh, for the new year. Have a look at it. Okay, let's go. Where do we start today? Maybe uh, with Milo. It's a good one. Allez, venez, milord, vous asseoir à ma table. Il fait si froid dehors, ici c'est confortable. Laissez-vous faire, milord, et prenez bien vos aises, vos peines sur mon cœur et vos pieds sur une chaise. Je vous connais, milord, vous ne m'aviez jamais vu. Je ne suis qu'une fille du porte. Qu'une ombre de la rue, pourtant j'y vous ai frôlé, comme vous passiez hier, vous n'étiez pas peu fier, dame, le ciel vous comblait. Votre foulard de soie flottant sur vos épaules, vous saviez le beau rôle, on aurait dit le roi. Vous marchiez en vainqueur au bras d'une demoiselle, mon Dieu, qu'elle était belle. J'en ai foi dans le cœur. Allez, venez, milord, vous asseoir à ma table. Il fait si froid dehors, ici c'est confortable. Laissez-vous faire, milord, et prenez bien vos aises, vos pains sur mon cœur et vos pierres sur une chaise. Je vous connais, milord, vous ne m'avez jamais vu. Je suis qu'une fille du porte, qu'une ombre de la rue. Dire qu'il suffit parfois qu'il y ait un navire pour que tout se déchire quand le navire s'en va. Il emmenait avec lui la douce aux yeux si tendres qu'il n'a pas su comprendre qu'elle brisait votre vie. L'amour, ça, ça fait pleureur. Comme quoi l'existence, ça vous donne toutes les chances pour le reprendre après. 
Allez, venez, milord, vous avez l'air du monde. Laissez-vous faire, milord, venez dans mon royaume. Je soigne l'heure et morde, je chante la romance. Je chante les milord, qui n'ont pas eu de chance. Regardez-moi, milord, vous ne m'avez jamais vu. Mais vous pleurez, milord, ça j'aurais jamais cru. Eh ben, voyez, milord, souriez-moi, milord, mieux que ça, un petit effort, voilà, c'est ça, allez, rien, milord, allez, chantez, milord. La 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 mais oui, dansez, milord. La 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 la. Bravo, milord. La 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 la. Encore, milord. La 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 la. Mille va sang this very well, really, and this is one, of course, one of her favorite French singer, Edith Piaf. There are many more. To be discovered, I'm sure. So we started with the poetry today, and we are saying farewell to the uh, to the année passée, and we say bonne année à tous vous, au dehors, dans le monde. <laughs> oh, it's not bad. I could be doing worse. Here we go. Okay, so that's that's that for French. For we now go to Spain. Spain. We got to Spain. Spanish. That's been a challenge for me, but I intend to continue with it because, uh, you know, it's uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful... Uh, I'm going to do Historia de un Amor first, and then I'm going to do Cuando Caliente el Sol because the sun is coming down on us uh, on the, you know, for the second last day of the year. Cuando caliente el sol aquí en la playa, siento tu cuerpo vibrar cerca de mí. Es tu palpitar, es tu cara, es tu pelo, son tus besos, me estremezco. Cuando calienta el sol, cuando caliente el sol aquí en la playa, siento tu cuerpo vibrar cerca de mí. Es tu palpitar, tu recuerdo, mi locura, mi delirio, me estremezco. Cuando calienta el sol, cuando calienta el sol. Love me with all your heart, that's all I want, love. Love me with all your heart, honor at all. Just uh, promise me this, uh, that you give me. All your kisses, every summer, every winter, every fall. Cuando calienta el sol, cuando calienta el sol. Oh, I did that first, didn't I? Because really there's a history, la storia de un amor. Eh? Let's, uh, let's go on with it. Ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón, y en el alma solo tengo soledad, y eso ya no puede verte, porque Dios me hizo quererte para hacerme sufrir más. Siempre fuiste la razón de mi existir, adorarte para mí fue religión, en tus besos encontraba el calor que me brindabas, el amor y la pasión. Es la historia de un amor, como no hay otro igual, que me hizo comprender todo el bien, todo el mal, que le dio luz a mi vida, apagándola después. Ay, qué vida tan obscura, si tu amor no viviré. Ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón, y en el alma solo tengo soledad. Y eso ya no puede verte, porque Dios me hizo quererte para hacerme sufrir más. 
Es la historia de un amor como no hay otro igual que me hizo comprender todo el bien, todo el mal que le dio luz a mi vida apagándola después. Ay, qué vida tan obscura si tu amor no viviré. Ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón, y en el alma solo tengo soledad, y soy ya no puedo verte, porque como Dios me hizo quererte, para hacerme sufrir más, sufrir más, sufrir más. So you can see now that I have been able to read the songs, and even know the words because the translation is next to them as well so you can help yourself with it so you know es la historia de un amor es la, la historia de mon amor de ma amor de mi amor es la historia de mi amor it's you can make a sentence you can write sentences with it very interesting when you are doing this now is there a Another one? No, I don't have any more songs. I've got to work on the Spanish songs a lot more, of course. And, uh, uh, you know, the end of the year is coming, even in Spain. So I wish you a fantastic ending to 2022. Let's hope that, uh, you know, some of our leaders have become enlightened and realize their mistake that wars are not for this world anymore. Don't go trying to get land. What are you going to do? Take it with you when you go away up there? No, not going to happen. And then when you're gone, the people themselves, they will decide whether they want to live in peace or not. All you need is a bit of democracy. Dictators... A good dictator is uh, even better than democracy, but, you know, the bad ones are really bad sometimes. And they can, you then, you've got to remember Machiavelli. Power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. And one of the politicians in Italy used to say, uh, power, cor you know, power, uh, is, uh, is sought after, but the people don't have it. Okay, so people have it, they use it. That's why you got to share it around sometimes. And the best way to do it is at the ballot box. In an honest way. Okay, so that's that. Now, you know what? I don't feel like doing a Spanish grammar today. I'm going to... Uh, Go to. Uh, I said I was going to do my little friend El Cid. I haven't done El Cid for a long time, so let me have a look. Well, I don't know where we did El Destierro, El Rey Destierra al Cid de Castilla. We did that one. We did El Prestamo de Raquel y Vidas. That's El Cid. Capito. La Despedida. La despedida. La toma de Castellón. La derrota de los principios moros de Valencia. Oh, I think that's where we're at. By batalla contra el conde de Barcelona. Well, the next one is El Cid conquista Valencia. Las Boras, that's Canto Due. So that was the first Canto, even this one is divided in Canto. Se junta la familia, la familia del, del Cid. Se junta la familia del Cid. La batalla contra Yusuf. Yusuf. Alfonso perdona al Cid. Se celebran Las Boras, the marriages, obviously. And that's Canto 3, La Afrenta de Corpus, El Episodio de León. Batalla contro Bucar. Bucar. Los Infantos regresan a Carrión. 
Los infantes azotan a sus esposas. Las cortes. Las tres demandas del Cid. That's it. The last bit of El Cid. So I bet we read the last chapter. Huh? <laughs> las tres demandas del Cid. Los jueces de las cortes fueron Don Enrico, Don Ramón y otros condes que no pertenecían a ningún bando. El rey mandó al Cid, al Cid que comenzara la demanda. El Cid pidió entonces que, entonces que los infantes le devolvieran sus dos espadas. Colada y tizón. Los jueces lo otorgaron. Los infantes entregaron las espadas a Alfonso. El conde García Ordonés, creyendo que era la única demanda, dijo a los infantes que al Cid les tenía, les, tenía, les tenía miedo. Por su barba, el Cid juró más venganza para sus dos hijas. El campeador se levantó y pidió que le devolvieran las riquezas que dio a los infantes como dote. Los infantes lo negaron diciendo que ya habían dado las espadas. Sin embargo, Alfonso y los jueces lo otorgaron puesto que los infantes ya habían gastado el dinero ofrecieron sus tierras en Carrión. Además, el rey mandó que completaran su pago con caballos, mulas, espadas finas y cosas de valor. Dijo entonces el Cid, los infantes de Carrión me hicieron tal afrenta que a menos que los rete, no los puedo yo dejar. El conde García Ordóñez insultó al Cid por su barba tan larga y dijo a Demías que las bodas no eran legales. El Cid respondió a lo de la barba sacando de su bolsa un me, me, mechón, mechón de la barba del mismo García Ordóñez que el Cid le mesó, le mesó tiempo atrás. Entonces el, Cid, entonces el Cid miró a Pedro Bermúdez y dijo, Pedro, que te laman tartamundo, tartamudo, habla tú que siempre calas. Entonces Pedro retó a Lí, a Fernando. Martín Antolines retó a Diego. Finalmente Muño Gustios retó a Sur González, hermano de los infantes, que han acabado de legar ebrio. Ebrío, con su cara colorada. Legaron a la corte mensayores de les, los infantes de Navarra y Aragón, hijos de Reyes, y pidieron al Cid a Doña Elvira y Doña Don, Dona Sol para sus señores. El Cid las concedió. Nuestro Cid regresó a Valencia. El rey y la corte fueron a Carrión, donde se llevaron a cabo los torneos. Los infantes de Carrión fueron derrotados. Doña Elvira y Doña Sol, vindicadas, se casaron con dos reyes. Así el Cid murió en la Pascua de Pentecostes, en plena gloria, con mucho honor, y finalmente fue pariente de reyes de España. So he ends up uh, becoming a royal. Well, I don't know. You know, I've made mistakes there for, in the Spanish, but you can see that you can read. Uh, you, you can, the reading part, as I said before at the beginning of this lesson, the reading part is, uh, you know, the listening part, the reading and the writing. I think they've got almost equal value, but, you know, reading is important to begin to get the pronunciation and the intonation right. It takes a while to f fix it up. So you've seen that I've made some progress this year. I'm happy with 2022 for having started Spanish. It's always been behind in the back of my mind, never tried it. And uh, yes, in the third age, we can 
attempt anything. We don't care what people think anymore. But we do, we do. But you must not, you know, let it affect you. Because sometimes the criticism by people are actually the best things you can receive. Uh, the worst part is when you get ignored. For example, I've got, to, I've got to say this. I would like all of the people who listen to me occasionally to actually share my work. Challenge yourself, share it with your friends, because by doing that, you can actually encourage people to learn a language. You don't always get it, you don't always have to be precise, correct, but you've got to try. The A, you know, if I had to give an A to a student, it's the one who tries the most, not the one who tries the least and knows it. It's the one who tries the most. That's the that's the person that should be rewarded more. Okay, so don't forget, share my work. Go over it over, you know, over again. Don't worry about, you know, my digressions. They're part of uh, my, my style. And uh, on that note, I wish you the very best for the new year. I uh, would like some people to come over to Insegna uh, to, to you know, uh, f buy some Spanish books. You can look look up insegna.com online to see what I've got. And, uh, you know, that applies to all the other languages as well. Okay, so on this note, that's it. That's my last lesson for the year because um, Sunday is the first of the year, but I won't start with my... Uh, Dante uh, Purgatorio uh, Canto 22. I will do that on the on the eighth, but uh, n not uh, this Friday. Next Friday, I'll be on again for uh, French and also on the Thursday uh, for history. So, on that note, again, adios, au revoir, bonne année, etc. Happy New Year from Tom Padula of Tombadula TV on YouTube and Insegna Booksellers. And here we go. Let me see if I can manage this.